addressing from Port of Ambarle. First, I would like to thank the maritime community, committee members, and uh, those who are sponsoring. And I'm very happy to be a part of it. Um, when it comes to economics, it mainly focuses on numbers. So does the container business. So that's, what, that's why it will be a data-driven presentation. Uh, so I apologize if, if I sound boring. Uh, as you see, the container import and export in Turkey showed a strong growth in uh, 2010 after declining in uh, 2009. From 2009, Turkey catch a continuous annual growth rate as 7%. On the last 10 years, years the average annual growth rate was uh, 7%. On top of the slide, you can see there are three growth rates are mentioned. One is, uh, as you see, the GDP's annual growth rate is 5.3%, which is less than the annual container growth. When I see this result, I assume that the foreign trade in Turkey is rocketing at that time, in the last 10 years. But actually, it wasn't true, because when we check out the uh, foreign trade uh, uh, rate, is just 2.3, still less than the container business. The bottom line is, the containerization in Turkey is still continue. It's okay, but the question is, which regions are dominating this increase? Well, we have two questions to answer here. Which region dominates the container handling, and which region is growing faster than the others? With more than 50% of the total, the lion's share of the Turkish container demand is on our region, as you can see on the blue. However, Mediterranean ports' importance is increasing in the recent years. Uh, the annual growth rate uh, for the last 10 years is higher than the Marmara region. In Med region, overall, the import and export total uh, growing rate is more than 10%, which is 10.5%. Whereas Marmara is growing around 7%. So it's nearly one and a half times bigger than the Marmara region. The same difference between the regions can also, be in, uh, can also be seen on the trade figures also. In the last 10 years, trade in Marmara uh, grow, grew by uh, 6%, whereas Marmara was 3.5%. So MED is pushed by a really high economic activity on the last 10 years, and especially for, for the last two years. To sum up, it's clear that the Marmara ports are dominating the container import and export handling figures, the volumes, but the main region is very high, uh, very hot in the last 10 years. So sometimes people ask that uh, if the main region can catch up with the Marmara in the coming years or the next years. Actually, uh, if you would declare Matt as a winner for the last 10 years, the loser is not the Marmara, because uh, as you can see on the slide from the red lines and the bars, the Asian ports lost heavily. So, uh, and especially on the last two years, uh, it seems that Asian ports lost their volumes to the Mediterranean ports. When it comes to transit volumes, in 2018, I mean last year, uh, it was around 3 million TEUs, which is uh, something like a quarter of the total container throughput in Turkey. Meanwhile, like foreign trade figures, Marmara is also dominating the transit volumes by nearly, I mean, nearly 90%, is something like 87%. Uh, as I mentioned on the latter slide, MET is the winner of the import and export volume games. Uh, here, the pie chart shows uh, two different Periods. The inner circle is uh, 2008, and the outer circle is just last year, 2018. In 2008, you see three colors over there, mud, Mediterranean, Marmara, and the Asian. However, when we come to last year, 10 years later, uh, Asian has been disappeared. It's clear that just Marmara and Mantworts increased their transit shares in the last 10 years and they stole it from uh, the Asian ports. But the other thing, why the, the transit volumes in Gro are growing in uh, Turkish ports, especially in the Marmara region, uh, the main reason is that the MED services prefer a hub and feeder model to service to the Black Sea ports rather than the deep sea direct calls. It's basically economics of scale, actually. 
up to now I'm trying to show the distribution among the regions. Uh, now I would like to move on a bit the macroeconomic sides of the polls. Uh, of course, there is a relationship between the macroeconomics and the uh, container business. First, I would like to speak a little about the TU and GDP ratio. This is a multiplier effect derived from uh, the container and GDP growth uh, figures. The formula is simple. The TU increase divided by the uh, GDP increase rate. In 2007, this multiplier was 2.2. 2 and last year it was 3.4. It's a very long learning curve, and uh, we have, when we analyze the last 10 years historical data, we see that as the GDP shows a sharp decrease, the multiplier reacted with an increase. And uh, when there is a positive output on the GDP, I mean, if the uh, actual output is uh, more than the potential, if it's heating, uh, the multiplier reacts negatively. I mean, the ratio shrinks. According to the new economy program, uh, GDP growth is projected to slow down to 2.3 for this year and with a gradual increase up to 3.5 for the next year. However, many consulting firms, international consulting firms, are expecting something a negative growth rate between 0.5 to 2.5. So, but when we uh, get the optimistic scenario and make the calculations. We read something like uh, it's really difficult to guess, but uh, we assume that we will see this multiplier as one for this year and the next year. But uh, I have to remind again that the calculations made with the uh, optimistic scenario and the positive uh, growth rates. So. If we expect the rate as one, uh, the period for this year and the next year, the total TU volumes are shown, the, the expected total uh, TU volumes are shown on the graph. These uh, volumes also in, uh, include the transits. The bottom line is, as you can see on the graph, neither the economy will fly nor the container volumes. The container traffic is expected to generate nearly 10 million TUs for this year and the next year, uh, which is, represents a growth rate for 2.1% uh, for this year and less than 1% for the next year. For the evolving regional significance, we assume that the Marmara region will continue to dominate this container business in Turkey. And uh, we expect no change in the level of domin uh, dominance. <coughs> My final analysis is the capacity utilization of the ports in Turkey. According to the data compiled from the websites of the ports, uh, the capacity utilization in Turkey is low. Apart from the metrics, all the regions are utilizing nearly half of their capacity. And Met region is using nearly 70% of its capacity. I believe this is because of the strong growth rate uh, Met was catch on the last two years, and actually especially in the last two years, but mainly on the last 10 years. However, in, Tur in total, Turkish ports are using uh, half of their capacity, and we are expecting to continue on this path. If not, it will be a discussion for the it, it, it will be a discussion topic for the next year's panel, I, I suppose. Thank you for listening, and I will be happy to answer your questions if there is any.